Welcome back to the Wizard Shop, and today we're going to talk about this really quirky Italian supercar. Let's get started. A supercar? Italian supercar? Yeah, well... It's a Subaru. It's a Subaru, but it's, it's Italian design Subaru. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, it, it doesn't look like the normal Subaru. No, this is a 1992 Subaru SVX. It's a lovely pearl marshmallow color. Mm-hmm. It's a really kind of a neat little car. It's kind of cool. Let's take a look at it. All right. So you guys just saw a video on the 2005 Maserati Coupe. Not only did the person that designed that car also design this car, but the person who owned the Maserati also owns this car. Once the Maserati was done, he dropped this off for some more work. We're going to take a look at some things today. It's got a few issues, but these are really quirky. It's a Subaru through and through, but it's got a lot of Italian flair to it. It's designed by Gugiaro, the Italian designer of the Maserati that we just saw. So let's go ahead and open the hood and take a look under there. Oh, look, Mrs. Wizard, more struts that don't hold the hood up. Oh, good thing you have something to fix that. This is on my Amazon affiliate in the link below. These lock the strut. It's just for this particular occasion. And you don't have to worry about damaging the ceiling surface on there because they're ruined anyway. They don't even work anymore, so there's nothing to salvage. But this engine is not your typical Subaru engine. It is a 230 horsepower, 3.3 liter flat six or H6 you can call it. This one has double overhead cams. As you can see down here on this plastic timing cover there are two cams on each side. One, two there and two over there. Two hundred thirty horsepower doesn't sound like much today but back then it was it was pretty decent. It's a kind of a neat little car. You can see the antiquated old ABS system there. I would hate to have to replace that if that went bad, but luckily it's still functioning fine. As you can see, the engine is very clean. This car has been also taken very good care of. It's here because the customer's concerned about a wheel bearing noise and also he'd like to have it checked for leaks and just a general inspection to see how the thing's going. And we do that very well with our videos. We check out the car, we put it on the lift and look it over. So together we're going to check this car over. I haven't even seen the underneath yet, but before we lift it up, let's take a look around the car and then we'll look into the interior. It looks kind of like a Dodge Intrepid on the front to me, or a very similar of the Chrysler LHS style. I guess it's just a 90s style. That was what was cool back then. But it has, like Mrs. Wizard said, the pearl marshmallow looking paint. I'm sure there's a better name for that, but marshmallow will work. Marshmallow works. It's got five spoke twist style wheels that are in decent shape. It's got an interesting door or as far as the window goes. This glass does not move. It's stationary. The only power window that you have is just a small section right here that goes up and down. And the same for the rear. So when you want to roll your whole window down, you don't get to do that on these. You only get this small little section here. Kind of interesting. It is dirty from, he trailered it up here and he went through some inclement weather and it got all over the car. You can see that. So it's a little dirty. But the rear end looks good. Subaru SVX. And this corner over here looks good. It's not banged up or beat up. Scratched or dented. It's got a sunroof. Very similar styling to your Land Rover, Mrs. Wizard, even back in 92, as far as having black on top and white on the bottom. Yeah. So as you can see, this one has 75,000 miles on it. It's been driven, but not driven overly much. These have a very quirky interior as well. On the dash, it has like an Alcantara style 
suede, I guess you could call it, also on the door. And there's a simulated wood grain there. It's like a dark brown. I don't know if it's painted on plastic or whatever. We'll go ahead and open that. There's our radio and our CD player. And here's the ashtray. There's our climate control. It's just a simple set of buttons. As you can see, the dash is in good shape. It's not cracked or coming apart. The seats are nice, comfortable seats. They're leather, and they're very plush, very supporting. It's got nice bolsters on them. They look very nice. And they have the iconic 1990s auto seat belt. Oh, yeah. Even the Tyler's Lamborghini Diablo that he just bought has this setup on it. I think it's disconnected right now, but this was the 90s. This is what you got in the 90s. In the back seat, we see this similar setup as the front. Nice, comfortable leather seats. Luckily, these don't look like toilets, Mrs. Wizard. No, no, they do not, but they definitely do not have leg room. No, there's not much room in the back at all. The headliner's in good shape. No drooping, no tears, no cigarette burns. All in all, this car's in really pretty good shape. I thought that the parking brake was quite interesting. It looks like a shifter. To someone who just jumped in here and did, never been in one of these before, they may try to put it into gear with that. I don't know. Even the glove box has got nice Alcantara on it. Interesting. Very cool car. Very quirky. Very Italian style. Just definitely you can see it in the interior and the exterior. Well, let's get this thing on the lift. Okay, well let's go ahead and get started on this thing. I haven't seen underneath it here, so we're going to join together and see what's going on with this car. Before we even make it very far, I can see on this belly pan here that there's already fluid there. So let's take a look and see where is that coming from. It looks like it's red in color. Yep, it's transmission fluid. So what does transmission uh, taste like there, Wizard? Like a plastic almost, like a melted plastic. Isn't that what you told me last night when you had some chamomile tea that you thought mm -hmm. it also tasted it like tasted plastic? tasted just like that. Yeah, that's so why I, I didn't drink it. Oh, I, I guess so. So you out there can now experience what that's like. Let's take a look here. Oh, there it is. That transmission cooler hose just needs a new hose or either the clamp tightened. Yeah, the rubber's still very pliable. It probably just needs the clamp tightened up and probably take care of that. The other side is good. So there's a leak we found, and it looks like very easy to fix. I don't see any other leaks coming from the engine, really. I do see a little bit of a leak back here, though. Let me get my light and see. Oh, another loose hose clamp, Mrs. Wizard. Same scenario. Transmission fluid's leaking down. Another easy fix, luckily. So that's where all this fluid's coming from. And then here we have something leaking back here. I think it's coming from that leak up front that we just saw. And it's blowing back here because it's all wet all in through here. So that will very likely take care of that. That's water. Just normal water from being in the inclement weather. That's condensation coming out of the exhaust from just running it just for a little bit there. The transmission's nice and dry otherwise. This one being an all-wheel drive, it is a Subaru after all. Let's check up here for these wheels. The brakes look good. Nothing loose there. The strut looks good. It's not leaking. Sway bar link is good. So let's check over here. The brakes look good. And... Uh-oh. Something's loose there. Let's see what it is. It's the inner tie rod end. Right there. So 
So it needs a new inner tie rod in. Do you see guys, when I was testing that, you guys used to wonder, why doesn't he yank on that thing? I've been doing this long enough, I can just barely put any kind of pressure and immediately find something that's loose. I didn't push very hard or, or uh, yank on it very hard, and I was able to instantly find something that wasn't right. That strut looks good. Sway bar length looks good. So we've got a couple of leaks and a tie rod end. Let's move our way back. Exhaust is stuck. Check out this drive shaft. I don't feel anything loose. Yep, no issues there. I want to show you guys something on this drive shaft. As you can see on the U-joint, they're staked in, into place. It's got little dots where they've staked it with a tool so that the U-joint doesn't come out. Typically, if those U-joints were to go bad, you just get, you have to buy a whole new drive shaft. I've actually taken these drive shafts to a couple of professional drive shaft shops in Wichita. All they do is drive shafts. And they hand it back to me and they're like, nope, we don't even begin to touch that. You're going to have to buy a whole new drive shaft. So that's kind of a bummer because that's probably a $10 or $20 U-joint. And they're going to spend $400 on a new drive shaft. It's just, it's kind of dumb the way they do that. Here we have a slight differential leak on the output seal here. It's not dripping on the ground. If it's full of fluid and it's not pouring out, I'll see if he wants to mess with that or not, depending on what it costs. That'll be his decision. It's not mine or your guy's decision. It'll be his decision what he wants to do. Check the wheels here. Nothing loose there. Sweep our link is good. Brakes are good. Nothing loose over there. Let's see. There's a nice big muffler here. Dual exhaust coming out of it. I didn't really notice anything with wheel bearings as far as looseness other than the tie rod that's up front. I'll have to road test this and discover if it's a wheel bearing noise or not. Let's go ahead and lower this thing down. I said there's some parts in here and let's take a look here and see. Oh, there's some hood struts, I think. Yep, nice new hood struts, very good. Finally, a customer that realizes their hood doesn't stay up and they supply a solution. It's very rare that this happens. Most people don't want to spend the money to fix it. He's already supplied the the struts to get it done. I really, really think that's great. Most of the time, I, uh, I present to the customer 25, whatever, 50 bucks per strut, depending on the car, they can be much more. Then just a little bit of labor, it ends up being 75, 100 bucks or something, and they're like, no, nah, I don't open the hood, I'm not spending that kind of money, just forget it. So the next guy, the next mechanic that works on it has to fight with the hood, it just, nobody ever wants to fix those. But this guy does, I'm glad he bought him, and we will definitely take care of that for him. Wow, that's one really sweet little car here, Wizard. Yeah, that's a neat little car. It's, it's really got really cool styling. Yeah, it's so iconic from the 90s. I had a friend who had a Plymouth Laser, and it looked a lot like this. Yeah, I think a lot of the cars in the early 90s, Geostorm, Plymouth Laser, SVX, all of them mm -hmm. had the same Long basic styling. and spread out, yeah. Yeah, they were, going, they were going for that styling. Yeah. This one's pretty cool. It's in really good shape. We'll take care of the leaks, we'll check out the wheel bearings and get the hood struts and a few other things fixed and this thing will be ready to be delivered back to the customer. Another yeah. happy repair at Omega Auto. And a simple one too, nothing, you know, over the top major. Right. Yeah. Very like good. Those. those are nice. <laughs> so if you're curious what kind of tools we use to work on these cars, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. 
And if you haven't hit the subscribe button already, I recommend you do that now. We still have a really cool car coming that I just bought. And yes, you told me that I can buy it. I guess, guys. I'm a little nervous. It's going to be sweet. You guys are going to love it. So again, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.